Hey guys, welcome back to my everyday makeup drawer. If you're not familiar with this series, basically I have two drawers here at my vanity where I keep the makeup that I just want to focus on over the next month or so. Some of those are new products that I'm testing out and trying to form a review on, and then some of them are older things that we go through my collection and pick out for me to just play with and kind of re-familiarize myself with over the next few weeks. So today we're going to be refreshing my everyday makeup drawers for February. So I'm really excited for that. But first I do want to take you through the things that I have in here currently and I'll take out the things that I don't want to leave in here for another month. So this is my face drawer. One thing I did add in from the last time we went through here was my Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint because I realized this expires this month, February of 2024. I did not know that date was on there until just a few days ago. So I want to try and finish this by the end of February. I don't know if I can do that. If I don't, I'll definitely keep it until it's actually done, but I do want to try and finish it before it's technically expired because it does have sunscreen in it. I love this product. This is actually my second bottle of it. I don't even know exactly how much is left in here, probably around the halfway mark. So I feel like I could maybe finish it in the next month and I would like to. This is one of my favorite base products of all time. It's one of those that like I don't ever want to be without. Like when I run out of this, I will buy a new one. It's that is very rare for me to have in a base product, but this is just so good. Even though it's expensive, it's worth it, but I do want to finish it. And this is probably going to be the only base product I use until it's finished. So I am going to go ahead and take the Marcel BB Cream out of here and put it away. I did really enjoy using this as my base product this month, though. And I have just been using this as my default base product anytime I'm sitting down and doing my makeup. This is the one I'm using. And this is beautiful on the skin, but I am going to put it away to focus on the Ilia one. I am going to go ahead and leave this primer in for another month. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I really just want to figure out what my thoughts are on this primer. I did use it quite a bit. It's always just so hard to tell if it's doing anything. So I need to try it just on one side of my face and not the other a few times to see if there is a huge difference when I wear this. But I do enjoy the consistency of this. It just feels really soft going on the skin. Just like, it's not totally velvety. Like it doesn't feel like a silicone based primer, but it does feel like it might have some silicone in it. It's not super sticky like the e.l.f. Jelly Pot primer, um, even though it does say it's a gripping primer. Again, I need to do some like scientific experiments <laughs> with like this just on one half of my face to see if um, anything is actually happening when I use this, but I do enjoy the experience of applying it. So I am going to keep this in for another month. This I always keep in here, Elf Halo Glow. Although, you know what? I actually think I can put this away for right now because I don't think I'm going to be mixing it with the Ilia. And honestly, these have a pretty similar look on the skin, so I don't think I would ever have a need to mix these two together. And that's usually what I use this for, is a mixer. So for now, I can actually put this back in my collection, just save some room in here. I'll also go ahead and put away the LA Girl Pro Conceal. This concealer is actually growing on me. After like two years with it, and going really back and forth on it, I have, I've actually come to appreciate this concealer. Typically, I'll let it sit on my under eyes for about a minute before I blend it in, and I find that that really helps build up some coverage, and it just makes it blend out really smoothly. So one of you guys gave me that advice to try that, and that has honestly been game-changing, and it's helped me actually really come to enjoy this concealer. So I did enjoy having it in here this month, but I am going to put it away to pick something else out. Um, I keep my Ardell brow glue in this section because I always try to do this before foundation, if I can remember, because it can kind of like lift up your foundation. So that'll stay in here, of course. My sunscreen will stay in here. I don't use this every day, but when I'm applying sunscreen here at my vanity, this is what I use, the Skin uh, 1004 Madagascar Centella sunscreen. And then I'm also still finishing up the Sigma color corrector. It's this. I don't know why I still have the empty compact in here, but I am finishing up just what is left of that and enjoying every second of it, so that will stay. Okay, I almost never do this, but I'm going to put both of these powders away and pick out some different ones. These are my two Holy Grail pressed and loose powders. The CoverGirl Clean Fresh pressed powder. I think I'm getting close to hitting pan on this. You can see the rings in there. This is also my second one of these, of both of these actually. Um, and this is just such a good setting powder for the face. It's translucent so you can set cream cheek products with it. It's mattifying without looking flat and lifeless on your skin and it's super blurring as well. But I am actually going to take a break from it and pull in a different powder. 
And same with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. This is my favorite loose powder. Now that I've tried this, I just feel like I would never have any reason to go out and buy a more expensive or high-end loose powder because this one is just so beautiful and so luxurious. Um, it's very smoothing on the skin, but at the same time, it's... I wouldn't call it mattifying, but it's also not obviously glowy either. It's just very softening and it's glowy without really having any shimmer particles to it. So it's amazing. But again, I want to switch things up and pick out a different loose powder. Okay, here is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in Fair. I love this bronzer so much, but I think I am going to put it away and pick a different one because there's one that I really want to try and hit pan on. So yeah, this one's going to go back in my collection. Essence the blush in the shade Befitting. For some reason, I just didn't reach for this a whole lot. I just wasn't in the mood for it. Lately, I just haven't been so into mauve like I used to be. I'm sure like I'll go back through a phase with this blush, but right now I just haven't... I've just wanted something a little bit more warm and lively on my skin, so this just hasn't been what I've been going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. I'm not gonna force myself to try to use it for the next month. Okay, I think I improved the lighting a little bit. I think this was probably my most used blush in January. I just love this color. It's like a pinky red. It has just the right amount of warmth to it to still like make it look really natural on my skin tone. Yeah, it's a great in from the cold sort of blush color. And I actually wanna keep this in for another month and keep using it since I'm enjoying it so much. I'm also really enjoying the Rare Beauty liquid blush in the shade Hope. This is honestly kind of like a slightly lighter version of that Milani blush and maybe just a little bit warmer as well, not quite as red. I found that my favorite way to apply this is to put it on the back of my hand first, pick it up on a brush and then apply it to my cheeks because that allows me to get an even distribution on the brush so that I can get a more even application. Otherwise, like if I just dot this onto my cheek directly and then blend it out, it just ends up not quite blending out right. Like I just get more color in the first spot that I applied it and then it just doesn't distribute evenly. So this is my favorite way to apply it. I think that, I think I just need to accept that that's true for all liquid blushes and honestly a lot of cream blushes too is just applying them to the back of your hand first. It just, it really is the best way. Even though I would like for it to just be as simple as like dotting it on and then blending it out or swiping it on and blending it out. It's honestly just really hard to make a formula that works that way. So it really does look like the color of my cheeks when I've like been outside in the cold and I'm really happy with it. This was my little souvenir from Vegas and every time I use it, it reminds me of the trip. So this is also gonna stay in. I also received some new goodies from Ilia recently and I'm so excited because as I was saying, I love their skin tint, but I haven't tried a whole lot else from Ilia. So I'm really excited to get more of an introduction to the brand. These are three of their multi-sticks. They let me pick out the shades. I picked out two blush shades and one highlighter shade. The blushes I got are called Dreamer and Dear Ruby. I've already used Dreamer. It actually has some foundation on it. Hang on. Okay. But there, yeah, I guess that's a good <laughs> swatch. There's that color. That is my kind of blush color. This mix of like peach and pink and red to get this really warm but really natural shade is just, that is my favorite type of blush shade. I did use this for the first time yesterday and the, I, I tried it by swiping it directly onto my cheek over the skin tint. I feel like because the skin tint is so serum-y and very dewy on the skin, it's like this kind of had a hard time gliding on because my skin was just so slick. So next time I think I'm going to try picking it up on my brush from the stick because I think that might work a little bit better. Then here's Dear Ruby. Ooh. Oh, wow. It's going on like kind of coral. Should probably work on my skin tone. Even though it's bright, it's sheer enough that I think it'll work for me. So that's exciting because I love red blush, as you know. And I feel like it's finally having its moment with the strawberry makeup trend. So I'm here for it. And then here's Cosmic Dancer. This is a cream highlight. When I used this, I applied it to my finger first and then my cheek. And it was kind of hard to tell if it was even showing up because like I said, this foundation is so, so glowy as it is. I'll probably try it with a less glowy foundation this month and see what I think. I will go ahead and put the Aether Highlighter in Pure Diamond Dust away. I definitely used this quite a few times over the last few weeks. Just a really pretty snowy highlighter shade. Super glisteny. It's like a 
silvery pink and it's just it's gorgeous i think i'm gonna pick out something a little less intense because you know most of the time if i'm leaving my house i'm gonna be around people i don't really want a super blinding highlighter on because i feel like it just looks a little bit intense in person especially so don't get me wrong i still love this highlighter especially if i'm doing just like a fancier look but so gonna take this one out I'm really bummed. If you saw my recent chore day vlog where I f tried to fix a bunch of my stick makeup products that had broken, I used a lighter to heat it up and then sort of smush it back down. Well, it didn't end up working on any of the products. One of them caught on fire and I had to throw away and the others, they have since broken again. So I think I'm gonna have to try another trick that you guys told me, which is to dig out all the product that is down in this little section and then take this and smush it down and it should stay in place because the problem is it just doesn't fit together <laughs> with that so yeah this is just getting really annoying <laughs> it's almost like not even worth the hassle but i mean my favorite part of this stick is the contour and that side knock on wood has not broken so yeah, but I'm gonna put this away. I'm getting kind of irritated with it. In my next short day vlog, we'll try to fix these products for the second time. All right, and then this is my everyday eye and lip drawer. This is honestly, like this everyday makeup drawer series is kind of meshing now with my speed reviews series. It's kind of like a two in one. Um, so I don't just do dedicated speed reviews that much anymore, but this is kind of where I give you quick reviews on things that I've been either testing or retesting from my collection. The Lethal Cosmetics Charged Mascara. This is a tubing mascara that I've been trying out from them, and it's actually a brown one. I was excited to have a brown mascara because right now all my mascaras are black, and sometimes I do just appreciate a softer lash look. This does have a really wet formula, so I do have to be careful right after I apply it not to blink too wide because if my lashes touch my brow bone at all, it transfers up there within like the first minute or so of having this on. So I just have, to, just have to be careful to do really small blinks. Hopefully as I continue using it, the formula will dry out a bit. I think I've had it open for about a week to a week and a half now. And I definitely feel like I'm starting to enjoy it more than I did when I first tried it. When I first tried it, it gave a very subtle look, but I do feel like now that it's starting to thicken up just a little bit, it gives me a little bit more intensity that I like on my lashes. It's very separating and lengthening, and it, it's not the most volumizing though, but I kind of like that just soft, fluttery, flirty lash look that it gives. And the nice thing about this is that it does not smudge or transfer or flake at all because it is, it is a true tubing mascara, it removes really easily with warm water and it's really satisfying to remove too. So I think I finally understand the hype with tubing mascaras. I've tried other tubing mascaras in the past that like weren't really true tubing mascaras, I guess. They just didn't quite do what this one does. Um, and I'm really enjoying this one. So they, it comes in a bunch of other colors too. Now I'm kind of interested to try the blue one. Really enjoying this. This I've been using more than any of my other mascaras. When I want a little bit more of a dramatic look, I will use the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity. This one I have found now flakes on me a little bit, which is really annoying because it didn't happen to me with the first tube of this that I had. But this one for some reason is more like dry and flaky than I remember it being. Maybe I just got an older tube or something, I'm not sure. But if I only wear it on the top lashes, it's fine. And this gives such a beautiful, super dramatic, volumized, fluffy lash. And you really only need one coat of this and it practically looks like false lashes. So I still really enjoy the look that this gives my lashes. And when I want a slightly more dramatic look, I'll wear this on the top and this one on the bottom. And that way I get very little, if any, transfer from this one. I don't usually go through my mascara container, but I figured I would this time. Um, still love the Revolution 5D Lash Pow. Honestly, I'm not sure why I haven't been using this recently because I do really like this one. This one is getting older. I'm probably going to have to retire it soon, so I should really make sure I enjoy it in the meantime. I really like this mascara, and this one also doesn't smudge or flake on me, so it's a very reliable option. This is probably my least favorite of this bunch. This is the Ulta Beauty New Heights Lifting Mascara. The unfortunate thing about this one is that it smudges so badly on me, but this has my favorite wand ever. Such a great wand. It makes it so easy to use, so easy to control. It gives great separation, length, 
it, it really does make my lashes look incredible but it just always transfers on me and it makes me so sad because other than that i love it and then i'm still loving my nyx lift and snatch brow pen i use this along with the ardell brow glue every single day that i do my brows i do think i'm going to need to repurchase this or maybe purchase a different one soon because i think it is running low um periodically this leaks out like this little part here but i just wipe it away and then it doesn't do it for a while so i don't know what that's about but i do think it's running low i still love this though it does such a great job giving you like a really natural hair like stroke i definitely want to get a different shade next time because i feel like this one just pulls a little too warm on me but um i really love this uh, formula. I'm not going to go through my liners because these are literally all the liners in my collection, so we don't need to go over that. Let's see, some eyeshadows. These are just some things from my winter palette rotation that live in here because they're small. The Kaja Beauty Bento and Chocolate Dahlia. I love this. I used the shimmer of this actually just yesterday, so definitely loving that. I still haven't gotten around to using the Quo Stacked Eyeshadow in Snow Cone for some reason. I just have not gotten around to it, but I need to because this is a perfect winter quad. If I don't use this by the end of, we'll say the spring because of the mint, I'm probably going to pass it on because that will mean I haven't used it in like over a year and I don't know. We'll see. I'm definitely going to try to use it though. The Unleashed a Glitterpedia palette. I did try this once. This essentially just has a bunch of different shimmer textures in all in one palette. It, it is all shimmer, but I don't necessarily mind that because they're all different types of shimmers. Like this one's actually more of like a satiny shade. Some of them are super fine shimmers. Some are like these really glittery shades. Yeah, it really just gives you like the whole range of different types of shimmer shadows all the way from satin to really chunky and glittery. So it's basically just an all-in-one topper palette, I would say. Plus, you can get a complete look with it if you lay down that satin brown shade and almost use it as a one-and-done one shadow like all over the lid and crease. And then just use any other combination of the other shades on top of that. I also still haven't gotten around to using the Hard Candy Purr Quad for some reason. Again, I just haven't been really loving mauve lately, but I feel like this could make a really pretty Valentine's look. So I'm gonna have to try to use it at least once this month. And if I don't, it might be time to pass this on as well. I feel like I didn't get to use ColourPop a little quirky very much this month, but that's okay. I may, I think I used it at least once, so I, I think that's good. I'm gonna put this back and probably pick something different. However, I did not use the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes in Strobe Light at all in the past since I've had this in here, so I am gonna leave this in. I have to use this at least a couple more times in the winter because this is just the perfect winter snow shade. Isn't that gorgeous? I do have two new palettes in here that I received in PR, one from Nomad and one from Lethal. We have the Nomad New Zealand Stargazing Palette and the Lethal Cosmetics Midnight Serenade Palette really fun color story. I actually, I thought it was funny because I received these around the same time and I noticed that like these color stories are actually kind of similar. They both have a lot of like berry and pink mixed with blue and purple, which you don't really see all that often. I think these are both really great for Valentine's Day. I have used the Nomad one a couple of times and loved it and I don't have anything else like the shimmers in here. I haven't used the Lethal Cosmetics one on my eyes yet, but I really want to use it soon. But I did go ahead and swatch these two palettes side by side, and I definitely felt like there were some big differences. There were a few overlapping shades or pretty similar shades, but everything else was pretty different. I felt like the shimmers in the Lethal one just weren't quite as interesting. I feel like compared to the Nomad shimmers, which to be fair are unbelievable, <laughs> I did feel like the lethal ones were a little bit lackluster, and I also just felt like the texture of these shadows f was very different from the texture of the lethal singles in the Build Your Own palette line. These just felt totally different to me. So I just felt overall more impressed by the Nomad quality, but then again, Nomad, I would have to say, is probably my favorite eyeshadow brand at the moment. I have liked just about everything they've done, and I just think their quality is so consistently good. Both of these are going to stay in this drawer for another month, and at that point I'll decide if I will want to keep the Lethal one permanently in my collection, 
since it does have such a similar vibe to the Nomad one. I'm also testing out the Kaja Wink Dazzle Eyeshadow and Glitter Multi Sticks. This is the only one I've tried so far, Mocha Sparkle. That is such a perfect, like, camel light brown. The thing with these, unfortunately, they are not budge-proof. They don't really lock into place, so they will crease on your eyes if you don't wear an eyeshadow primer underneath. Kind of bummed about that, because for a high-end eyeshadow stick, I would really prefer if it would lock into place. But I really like just like the wash of color that this gives your eye. It's not a fully opaque eyeshadow, which I think is usually the case with Korean eyeshadows. It's usually just like a translucent wash of color and there's just something so sophisticated about that. So I do really like the look I get out of this. Then on the other side, it has this stamp, which you twist up and it comes out and you can sort of paint it on like that or you can just tap it. Like I'll usually tap it on my inner corner and then just like lightly drag it out, blend it out. I just think that's a pretty great concept for an eyeshadow because a lot of times I'll be using an eyeshadow stick and I'll just want to add like a little bit of shimmer to my inner corner and with this it's just built right in so I don't even have to grab a separate product and it takes up the same amount of space as a regular eyeshadow stick so I've really been enjoying this despite its shortcomings but just be aware, it's not the most long-lasting unless you put a good eyeshadow primer underneath. I haven't actually tried this one on my eyes yet. This is Peach Sprinkle, but there's the actual pen. And then the shimmer, yeah, really gorgeous. I think I'm going to be loving this one, especially in the summertime. Like, such a great, easy slightly colorful look that still looks really natural. Like, peach is such a natural color. So, um, excited about both of these. I think these are the only two from the bunch that I'm gonna keep. Let's try blending that one out, Let's see. Okay, yeah, it blends out to be pretty sheer as well, but a nice wash of color. Lastly, we have some lip products in here. I think I'm just gonna keep my Tower 28 lip gloss in here until it's finished because I really do wanna finish this lip gloss this year. And I'm not doing a project pan this year, but I do think I at least wanna do a video letting you know that like the products that I hope to finish this year or hit pan on because I definitely have some products in mind. I won't do updates on them, but I just want to make a little effort to use those things up and get them moved out this year, because even though I'm not doing a project pan with updates and stuff, I still want to use up products. So I think I just at least want to have like a little list of things that I'm keeping in mind for the year, this being one of them. I definitely used the Koki lip pencil in Dusty Rose a lot this month. Have to say though, I don't like a nude rose like this nearly as much as a brown these days. I used to love a like soft dusty rose like this. Now I just don't love that color on my skin tone. Sometimes I do still want to go for a cool mauve lip depending on my eye look though so I think it still makes sense to have this in my collection but I am going to go ahead and take it out of my everyday makeup drawer. I also was testing out the Amuse Dew Tint in Soul Soul. This is a nice light peachy lip stain. This is a Korean brand and I think I really like Korean lip stains because this and the Kaja one are very similar and I love both. They almost feel watery and they're just super lightweight on the lips. They have some really nice different shade options too that don't all immediately turn bright pink. So really love this. Definitely a rave review on this one, but I am going to go ahead and put it away since I have now developed my thoughts on it. Also loved using this Revy Beauty Effortless Lip in Dahlia. I think of this like a tinted lip balm. Uh, actually matches really well with that Koki lip liner. I definitely prefer the more peachy shade that this comes in, but this is also a really pretty option, especially if I'm wearing like a cool toned eye look. But I am going to go ahead and put that away and swap it out for something else. This is another thing that I attempted to fix but has now broken again. The Wet n Wild lipstick in Skinny Dipping. Another mauve. Again, I have so much mauve and like it's just not my favorite color anymore, but this is like a matte lipstick version of those two shades. Like I said, sometimes I'm in the mood for this shade, so I am still going to keep this. I'm going to have to try to fix this for a second time as well, but we will get to that in my next tour day vlog. This I didn't manage to use at all in the past few weeks, so I'm going to leave it in for another month. This is the Queen Musea lipstick in Montreux. It's this beautiful, soft peachy red. Isn't that stunning? Um, that is so pretty and I think that's going to be such a great Valentine's Day lip and also a late winter into spring lip because I do feel like after Valentine's Day, once we're like halfway through February, that's when we start at least anticipating spring. <laughs> 
even though it definitely won't feel like spring yet. And I think this is going to be a great color for that. It looks like the color of like a poppy or something or some kind of flower. And I will go ahead and keep the Essence Soft and Precise lip pencil in here to go along with that. This is a really good soft red coral as well. I feel like it matches that Queen Musea lipstick really well. So that will stay in there to go with that. Really love testing both of these out from Lawless. I love this Forget the Filler lip gloss. This is in the shade Cherry Vanilla. Another really pretty soft red. I am going to keep this in for another month because I just think it's so perfect for Valentine's Day. The shade, the color, it smells like cherries. I love these glosses. They make your lips look so glassy. They're definitely thick, but they stick around for a long time. But the shine sticks around on your lips for a long time and they're not really stringy or anything. They're not stringy or gloopy, but you know, you have to like a kind of thick feeling, somewhat sticky gloss on your lips. Unfortunately, this is the Cherry Vanilla Balm Stick. Beautiful packaging. I've said before, this feels like kind of like an adult lip smacker. It looks kind of orangey red in the tube, but it does go on more of a pinky red, kind of like the gloss. Unfortunately, this, if I swallow it by accident, it uh, tickles my throat. So I'm going to have to put this into the bag of lip products that I am allergic to. I actually just got off the phone with my doctor with for like a telehealth visit. And I finally asked her about my allergies, the, the allergies that have been popping up to certain things, lip products, perfumes, things like that. I've just all of a sudden been developing a bunch of new allergies over the past year. She said it's super common for that to happen. And she recommended a few things. She recommended trying a low inflammatory diet. She recommended that I start taking like a daily allergy medication, like Allegra or Zyrtec or something like that. Um, and then also to try a saline nasal spray twice a day. So I'm going to try all of those things. And she said that should really help the the symptoms a lot. So I'm excited about that. I'm hoping that maybe, like she said, allergies can also just go away as quickly as they came. So I'm hopeful that after I try those things, they will slowly go away and I'll be able to reintroduce lip products and perfumes that I haven't been able to use because those are two of my favorite things in the entire world, lip products and perfumes. And to take those away from me is just cruel. <laughs> so I really want to try to get this situation under control, whatever is going on. But yeah, I'm feeling really happy to have some direction now for things to try. And it's also good to know at least that it's really common. So it's not like a huge cause for concern necessarily, but it's a good idea to try to reduce my allergy symptoms because if I don't, then they can just keep getting worse. So that was really good to find out. But this um, I'm going to not technically declutter, but I'm going to put it to the side and hopefully be able to use again one day. So that is everything that's going to stay in here. Actually, quite a few of these things are staying in for yet another rotation. Okay, so we just talked about a bunch of new makeup that I'm having fun testing out, but I also want to make sure that I'm paying attention to my older products in my collection. So I want to pick out a little of something in every category to add into those drawers. Um, but I'm not going to add another foundation because like I said, um, I just want to focus on that Ilia one and try to use it up. I'm also going to keep working on my Sigma color corrector. So I do just need to pick a concealer. I'm kind of in the mood for the Urban Decay Stay Naked concealer. I feel like it's been a while since I used this and I, uh, I think I'm about like halfway done with this. So it would be cool if I could use this up this year. Yeah, so that I'm excited to use. This is like a spot-on shade match for me. This is the shade 20CP. I love it. For powder, I did put away my two like top top favorites because I want to rotate these two in. This, uh, this one here is the Makeup Revolution Translucent Baking Powder, which came from this container. I just decanted some into here. And then the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I have been giving this another chance, and I actually think I do like this as a face setting powder. I don't find that it looks too light or too yellow on my skin. Um, it's really on the under eyes. I don't love it because in order to get enough powder to fully set my under eye concealer, it just looks way too bright because I have to just pack way too much powder on and it ends up making my under eyes look really light and yellow, <laughs> and I don't want that. So. Uh, I can't use it on the under eyes, which is what I'll use the Revolution powder for, and then this one I'll use on the rest of the face. 
Let's grab the Revolution Sport Fix setting spray because I am starting to be more physically active this year. I'm doing ballet classes and I'm also going to start going to the gym and I don't usually wear makeup when I'm doing those activities but sometimes it's just inevitable like the way that my day works out it's I just end up going to the gym with makeup on and so in those cases it'll be nice to have a setting spray that will help my makeup at least hold up and not just like completely sweat off my face. Okay next we have my cheek drawer this is what I'm really excited for. Actually let's start with bronzer first because that's usually what I apply first and then blush and then highlighter. Honestly I should switch these around, shouldn't I? Into the order that I use them. Like, yeah, that's so much better. Okay, you know, I'm really finding myself drawn to this product recently. I just want to keep using it because I actually started enjoying it the last time I had it in my everyday makeup drawer. The JLo Beauty That Star Filter Complexion Booster in the shade Rose Gold. I know this is kind of like a one of those multi-purpose products, but I treat this like a bronzer but it's kind of like a blushy bronzer, almost a blonzer, if you will. It took me a while to get the hang of this. It's a bronzer tone on me, and I love that it's rosy. This does dry down somewhat quickly, not so quickly that you can't blend it out in time, but you have to be strategic. <laughs> like, you can't just dot it on and then, oh, go wet your sponge or do something else and then blend it out. No, like, you need to blend it out right away and just as quickly as you can and don't try to over blend once it because you'll sort of feel once it sets into place and that's when you need to just stop touching it so you just need to get it blended out before that point <laughs> i know it sounds like a very high maintenance product and it kind of is but the result i get is so pretty and that's why i didn't want to give up on this product because i love i just love this look it's so glowy it's so bronze like i just i could, I could just stare at this color it's so pretty and so I like I am glad I you know tried it in a bunch of different ways because now I feel like I know how to use it and I can really enjoy it and appreciate it. So yeah, sometimes products are high maintenance, but they're worth it. I guess that's the moral of the story. But I do really want to grab this Fenty Beauty bronzer in the shade Into Sun because I feel like I must be so close to hitting pan on this. And this is one product that I would like to hit pan on this year. So Let's go ahead and get a head start on that. I love this bronzer so much, so I don't think it'll be a problem. I can absolutely use this every day and be happy. So this, sometimes I'll use these together or just one or the other. Moving on to cream and liquid blush. Okay, we are going to pull in the About Face cream blush in Laid because this is the time of year to wear this. Like late winter, Valentine's Day, even headed into spring. I think that's perfect for some like cutesy Valentine's Day looks. And yeah, so now is the time to pull this in for sure. That's why, that's why I love doing these everyday makeup drawer videos is because it reminds me to pull in things that I love using during a certain time of year. Um, there's also this, do I need another pink blush? This is the Essence Pure Nude in Shimmery Rose. You know what? Yes, I am gonna put this in. I, I mean, I, yes, I'll have two pink blushes, but tis the season for pink blush. Mm, actually, no, I am going to pull this one in. I'm just going to allow myself to pick as many products as I want today, even if it ends up being a little overwhelming. Because I spread out my... It used to be one drawer, now it's two drawers for my everyday makeup drawer. Um, I have more space in each drawer, so I'm going to allow myself to just grab more things than I, maybe I otherwise would. Um, this is the AOA Studio Paw Paw Plush Blush. Really fun and cute color in my opinion. The shade is called Cumulus. It's this really fun pinky red color and I feel like pinky red is perfect for Valentine's Day. Actually no, I do want one contour. I'm gonna grab actually the Elf. I'm actually gonna grab the Elf Putty Bronzer in Feelin' Shady. This is a contour that I think I'm really close to hitting pan on. I'm actually surprised I haven't hit pan on this yet. And how cool would it be to hit pan on both this and the Fenty bronzer in the same like month? Wouldn't that be awesome? So see, the panning mindset is not going anywhere, guys. I'm just not doing like a real like high pressure project pan. I'm just kind of like trying to continue putting into practice the things I learned from panning just without having to do a project. That's the goal, you know? So these are my try and hit pan this month. And the everyday makeup drawer is the perfect 
place for that. Hi, Tala. The everyday makeup drawer is the perfect place for me to, to do that, to be able to just freely rotate things in and out as I see fit and hopefully try to hit pan on some things in the process. As far as highlighter, I'm gonna pick my ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Monster. This is like a frosty pinky red duochrome blush. Really unique, really fun. I've had this for forever. I recently used it on a patron live stream and it reminded me why I love this highlighter so much. And then we have that cream highlighter from Ilia. I think that should probably be enough highlighter. I would really like to try and make maybe some progress on this highlighter, maybe expand the pan a bit. And the nice thing about this is that even though it is kind of a fun color, this is still a very subtle highlighter, which is nice because that's what I've been into lately. So it's nice to have like a fun twist on a subtle highlighter. Okay, probably the best drawer for Valentine's Day. Um, I definitely have some lipsticks already in mind that I want to pick out. Starting with uh, this one from CoverGirl, this is their 24-hour matte lipstick in the shade Thrill Seeker. This is so fun. I hardly ever wear this, but when I do, I I just think it's so fun. This with like a really soft, subtle, shimmery pink eye look would be so cute for Valentine's Day. So yeah, <laughs> this is going in. Absolutely. I really don't wear lipstick that often, but I like to wear it on camera at least quite a bit. So I'll definitely try to wear this in at least one upcoming video. <laughs> I'm also going to grab this one from Urban Decay. This is in the shade Art Walk from their Vice Matte Lipstick line. This is, I like to think, kind of like a lighter version of that Comfort Girl shade. It's just a little bit lighter, but a really similar shade of pink. One brand that definitely needs to be part of this drawer is Kaja. They have so many cute heart-shaped products. It's kind of their thing. This is the Kaja Heart Melter Lipstick. Uh, Moisture Melt Lip Gloss Stick in Let's Chill. It is a click up pen, but it's really nothing like the Tarte click up gloss sticks. This is more of like a glossy lipstick. Like it has a pretty substantial amount of color payoff. Um, it does have a, sh a shiny finish, a glossy finish, but it's not like but it's not like a thick gloss sitting on your lips. It feels more like a moisturizing lipstick. So varying levels of pink, that's fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a very pink month. I think I wanna also grab, because I just think it's really romantic, a brown nude. This is the e.l.f. O-Face Satin Lipstick in the shade No Doubt. I think this one is still a little bit wobbly, unfortunately, but like what a beautiful tan brown nude color. I am really looking forward to using this this month. I'm also going to grab my favorite brown nude lip. This is the Koki lip pencil in nude to go along with that e.l.f. O-Face lipstick because it matches really, really well. This one's just like a little bit more neutral. Also want to pull in the Kaja. I think this is called the Jelly Charm lip stain. This has become, quickly become a favorite as well, kind of similar to the Amuse lip stains. Very similar watery feel. And I just love this shade. This is like the color that I just want my lips to be all the time. It's pretty similar to my natural lip color, but it's just so pretty and so juicy looking. It smells like peach. This is the shade called Peach Fizz. This is definitely going to be one of my go-to lip products this year, I can just tell. Um, in fact, this has lived in my purse for the better part of the last month. You know what? I think I want to add in my other Lawless Forget the Filler lip gloss. This is in the shade called Juicy Watermelon. This is like a nice, really cute, cool-toned bubblegum pink. And another one that I think is so pretty for Valentine's Day. And then I also have the more red one in the in my drawer already. Ooh, and I haven't even picked out a tinted lip balm yet. Um, okay, let's grab, since I feel like I need at least some red in this mix, one of my few red lip products remaining. This is the AOA Studio Balm Shell Lipstick in Kitten. This one's super cute for Valentine's Day. Oh, this has a heart in the core. Does that mean I need to grab this too? I'm going to grab the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Happy. This is more of like a mauve. I know I just said I'm not super into mauve, but this is actually an acceptable mauve to me. I feel like it has 
a little bit of brown to it that makes me like it a little bit more. So this is one of my favorite My Lips But Better Throw It In The Purse lip products. Okay, last one, last one. I'm not sure if I'm even going to get around to using all of these, but it's I just want to have them as options. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Lipstick in Amazing Amal. This is so tiny. I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to use up. I don't think I've ever used up a bold lipstick before, but that would be pretty cool. This is just a great Valentine's Day color as well. It's almost like a a wine color. Okay, I think I grabbed entirely too many lip products just now, but I'm also so excited to use all of these, so I better just wear a lot of makeup this month, I think, is what's gonna have to happen. Okay, I'm gonna grab one last lip pencil. This is the Koki lip pencil in the shade True Red. If I want to do a slightly more full color red lip, I can pair this with that AOA Studio tint, uh, red tinted balm and get like a pretty opaque red that way since a classic red is very valentine's day as well and you know i'm not sure if i'm even going to get around to using all these things in february i better wear a lot of makeup this month if i want to but i do just want to have all of these at the ready as options okay definitely check out my most recent chore day vlog if you want to see the eyeshadow palettes that are sort of in my seasonal palette rotation. So we're not going to pick out any additional palettes today because my basket is very full, but I definitely do want to pick a single potted eyeshadow. Let's grab the Surat Souffle eyeshadow in the shade Gris Dew. It is this stunning brown taupe, but I do feel like luxury just feels right for Valentine's Day. Like it just feels very romantic and sultry. So this will be really fun to just put all over the lid as a smoky taupe look. For something a little softer and more subtle, let's also grab the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow in Rose Gold. This is such a lovely texture, honestly. It's very creamy. The thing is, the result you get from it is just not anything special. Definitely not worth the $34, but it is a really pretty peachy rose gold color. I like that it's not over the top shimmery because sometimes you just want a more subtle but still glowy eyeshadow. And that's what this is. It's glowy. It's not really super shimmery. I mean, it has shimmer when you look up close, but yeah, it's just, it is nice. So let's grab that. We'll just have some luxurious eyeshadows to use this month. Okay, for a little added sparkle, I'm going to pick my... LA Girl Dream Glitter Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Rose Gold. This is so pretty while we're just, you know, we're picking a lot of rose gold products. Look at, look at this. LA Girl is an underrated brand. I really would like to try more from LA Girl and really just more from the drugstore this year in general. But LA Girl seems to generally be a brand that like when you do hear about their products, you hear really good things but you just don't hear about them very often. And I, I feel like that needs to change, at least on my channel. So let me know your favorite LA Girl products down below. This is, I feel like, the perfect amount of products to fit in this drawer. And I am so looking forward to using these all throughout the month. Okay, and here is the eye and lip drawer. I love doing these videos so much. This video, since it was a lot longer, I gave a lot more detail on the products. I'm not gonna do a get ready with me in this video, but I will be doing a short get ready with me or tutorial using a bunch of these products coming very soon. So I'll still use them on camera. It just won't be part of this video since I feel like this video is probably long enough as it is. But I think that is everything for today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want even more content, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership where I do an extra video every single month. And this past month, I did a Shop My Stash tutorial based on the 2024 Pantone color of the year, which is Peach Fuzz. And it was so much fun. I love this color so much. So I had just such a blast going through my collection, picking out 
all of the peach makeup. So if you want to see that video and all the other videos that I've posted on my memberships, feel free to check that out. But otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.